Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm making the most out of one die set and I will be playing with these uh, studio light dies that give you lots of different designs for uh, Christmas trees along with uh, ornaments and stars to play with and I'm going to create three different cards trying to go through different styles and techniques and show you some ideas on what you can do with uh, Christmas tree dies. Now this video is also part of a video hop by Studio Light. Leave a comment down below for a chance to win a prize. You will find all the details on how to enter the giveaways down below in the description area. So for the first card I'm going for a vintage style and this is going to be a window card. You can easily turn it into a shaker card if you like. And if you're going for a vintage look and feel, start with craft paper. It always makes things easier. Now I'm using a text stamp and I'm going to stamp a little bit at the background. I don't want to end up with a perfect impression, that's why I will use a scrap piece of paper and just tap in different areas. The color that I'm working with is Distress Ink and that's Vintage Photo. And I'm going to stamp with that text stamp at the top of my panel. And then I will repeat the same process at the bottom of the panel. Again, I will do the same thing with a scrap piece of paper. I'm just going to tap off a little bit of that ink so I don't end up having the perfect impression. And this text stamp is a clear text stamp from The Essentials by Yolanta from a previous release. It's one of those text stamps that you can use again and again. Now, I do have another stamp set. This is a clear one which is perfect for Christmas. And this is from the Christmas release by Studio Light. And I'm just trying to decide which one I'm going to play with. So finally I decided to go with that one. I'm going to stamp that at the background. Again, I'm working on the visual texture here. So I don't go for the perfect impression. I don't want this to be super vibrant. Again, I'm going with uh, brown. That's a vintage photo. And with the same ink pad, I'm going to do some inking all around the edges. Notice that I'm not using the oxide ink pad, this is the original Distress ink. I'm adding inking around the edges as well as around the edges of that window tree. And to finish off the look of that background, I'm swiping the ink pad on my glass mat. I'm applying a little bit of water and then I will add some splashes all over the background. And I'm going to finish off the background by adding some white splashes. This time I'm using white acrylic paint by uh, Art by Marlene. I diluted that with water again and I'm adding the splashes all over. This is going to give the look and feel of snow. So here is a close-up look on my background, lovely vintage look and feel using mixed media techniques. Now I have this dark green cardstock and I will cut out one tree, again using the same die as I did for the window. I am creating my card base out of craft cardstock and this will be a side folding card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now align the vintage panel on top of it and you can see it is slightly smaller so that it leaves a border. And then on top of that I'm going to place the die. I am going to open up the card and run this through my die cutting machine. I did open up the card to make sure that I'm going to open up a window that has the shape of uh, the Christmas tree only on the front of the card. And of course I did secure everything down with some washi tape just to make sure that it's not going to move on me. To get the same look and feel as the rest of the card, I'm adding a little bit of vintage photo around the edges of my cutout tree and this is going to fit perfectly inside that window. So I did use some glue at the back, I'm going to inlay that. And when you open the flap, you will be able to see the tree, which is going to be on the inside of the card. And you can leave that window as it is empty. I decided, however, to use some acetate so that I can cover it up. And this is going to provide a surface for me later on to add some ornaments on the front flap of the card. So I'm just adding uh, two pieces of double-sided tape and I'm going to stick the acetate there. I'm inking up the edges with a slightly darker color of brown this time so that it stands out against the top panel. 
And then all I have to do is to glue this panel on top of my card front. And this is where you can uh, do lots of variations of this design. You can use foam tape and add some uh, uh, shaker mix inside. The way I did it was to sandwich that acetate in between the front flap and the panel that I placed on top. And you can see the tree on the inside of the card. Now I'm going to grab my die set again and this time I'm going with that garland. I'm going to cut it out from uh, gold glitter cardstock and I will also cut out one of the tiny stars. So you can use all those little pieces to decorate your tree. You can either stick those pieces on the inside directly on top of the tree or like I'm doing here I'm going to add all the decorations on top of the acetate. For my star I used a tiny little foam tape underneath so it is popped there and I do have one extra star so that I can decorate the tree on the inside of my card. Now if you look at the back through that window you can probably tell where the glue is. If that bothers you you can uh, cut out extra ornaments, they are symmetrical so you can easily stick them at the back and you won't be able to see the back of those ornaments at all. And of course you can stop at this stage, just add the sentiment and you are good to go. I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to bring another die set from the latest release by Studio Light. And this is a set that you can grab again and again because they have the perfect leaves and branches for Christmas compositions. They are great fillers and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I did die cut this die from uh, green cardstock and from vanilla cardstock. I added some vintage photo very lightly so that they all have the same look and feel and then I'm going to arrange them at the bottom. And of course here you can make it as fluffy as you like, you can add even more branches or different ones, there are some lovely branches with berries. I decided to leave it as it is and uh, as a sentiment I'm going to use one of these stamps. I am going with the one that I used for the background. I will stamp it two times and use a circle die to cut it out. With my scissors I'm cutting out what looks like a banner on this stamp so that I can pop it with foam tape on top of the other stamp just to make it look more special to add that extra something. And this reads Happy Holidays December 25 so it works as a sentiment. And this will go at the center of the branches. Here is a close-up look on this card. I did add some gems as a last minute finishing touch. I'm going to add some close-up photos of this card and you can have a similar design with an ornament die for example. Instead of using those branches at the bottom you can add them at the top of your ornament. And as promised I'm going to make the most out of these dies so let's make another card using a completely different style. This time I'm going for a more clean and simple look, not a vintage one. So I grabbed this DIY block paper pad. This is from the latest Christmas collection by Studio Light. And I try to find a quite tough, uh, busy background. I like this one especially because it has a solid background on one side and it is very busy on the other side. And I will use both of those uh, sides for this project. I'm going to die cut this tree many many times. I actually used six of those trees that I cut out but you can go ahead and make it even fluffier. We are going for a three dimensional tree here and the shape of it just because it is so symmetrical makes it perfect for this technique. So all I'm doing is to fold those trees in half and I alternate the way I'm folding them. For half of them I have the solid color on the outside and for the others I have the patterned one. So here you see I have five of them folded in half and you can see how they alternate solid to patterned paper. Now I am going to use one more tree which is going to work as a base and I'm going to stick all those folded trees one next to the other. It's a really fun technique and ends up with beautiful fluffy trees. The more folded uh, pieces you use, the fluffier your tree will be. I'm using glue, white glue, just because I, it makes life easier when you try to stick one tree on top of the other. You can easily slide them until you have the perfect alignment. 
and I'm going to stick the last one here. Now this is where I decided I didn't need to add any more of those trees. I find it is uh, really fluffy and lovely as it looks at the moment. But of course you can glue the two last pieces together and end up with an all-around ornament. However, I'm going to stick that on top of my base and I end up having a three-dimensional element which is perfect as a focal point on top of my card. Now the fun part is that you can make it fit inside an envelope. So now I'm grabbing my paper pad again and I'm going to look through those uh, pattern papers included. I know that everything matches perfectly with my tree since I did use pattern paper from this paper pad. I decided to go with this one, a lovely subtle design with white stars and I'm going to cut out a piece without destroying the elves I might use them for another project. The fun part about this paper pad is that it gives you lots and lots of designs that you can easily pop out and decorate your card. So I can have a little elf along with my tree or little ornaments, candy canes and stuff like that. These are the DIY blocks by Studio Light. There is a whole collection of them with lovely designs. They have a scissor with an X on top. That means that all designs are already cut out for you. All you have to do is to just pop them up. So again for my sentiment I'm going with one of those circle stamps, I'm going to stamp one that has a lovely deer and I'm stamping that with uh, red ink. I just popped out this uh, little strip of uh, pattern paper from the DIY blog and I'm also going to pop out one of those circle ones. And now I have all the elements ready to go and it's time to assemble my card. I did use foam tape at the back of this panel. Since I used uh, red ink to stamp my sentiment, that's why I picked that uh, a red strip and that circle to introduce a little bit more red on my card. And this is one of those cluster cards, as I call them, where you find different elements and you just combine them all together, almost one on top of the other, creating layers. And remember that although the tree looks so dimensional, you can easily flatten it up and it is going to fluff up again when you take it out of the envelope. So I'm going to place my sentiment down and I did uh, combine it with the red circle underneath. Again, I did grab that uh, die set with all those branches. I used one of them to cut out branches out of white cardstock and out of vellum. And again, these are great fillers. They are going to give something extra on an otherwise plain card. I'm just tucking them underneath the sentiment. I finished off the card by adding some gems. And here are some close-up photos. That three-dimensional tree is a great focal point and you can make it with any pattern paper. Now I am preparing my next card, again a side folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And for the previous card I did use this DIY block which is the Cozy Christmas. For my last card I'm going with this DIY block, this is called Happy Christmas and it features all those lovely designs and I love the modern color combination. Again, it's one of those paper pads where you get lots of pattern papers, but also elements that are already cut out for you and all you have to do is to pop them out. And these are tags, banners, stars and lots and lots of elements that work as focal points. So again, I'm going to play with this one for this card and again, of course, I will use the Christmas dies as I did for all the cards. Remember, look for that scissor with the X on top if you are looking for these paper pads by Studio Light. Now, I decided to go with this pattern paper that has a very subtle look of um, wood grain and I'm going to use one of my rectangle dies to cut out a piece. Of course, I have to be very careful not to ruin that uh, a little deer and uh, the tree. I may use those as focal points on another card. In those pads, you do get two pages of its design. However, I'm always quite frugal with my pattern paper and I don't want to ruin a lovely design with no reason. Now for this card, I'm going for a spinner card. We are going to end up having a tree spinning on the, at the center of our card. For that, I laid on top of my card base the panel 
that I cut out from the pattern paper. Then on top, I'm securing the die. I open up the card so that um, I don't cut out all the way through the bag. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And this is what I end up with. So now I have a window on my actual card and a window on the pattern paper panel. Now, if you notice on the die set, you get two dies for the same design. I use the larger one to cut out that, uh, those first windows. Now I'm going to grab the smaller one and I will grab again the paper pad and look through for a lovely design. For this card, I want to avoid traditional colors. That's why I decided to use that pink pattern paper to cut out my trees. You need two of those. And I'm also going to pop out those lights to decorate my trees. Now these uh, lights are quite long, so with just one of those cutouts, we can decorate both our trees. I'm just using glue and I'm just going to lay it on top of my pink Christmas tree there. And I will use my scissors to chop off the excess. You can die cut ornaments if you like, or even you can decorate them with sequins, with gems, with pearls. Just do whatever you like on top of these. And now here is how the mechanism works. You need to have two identical shapes. I do have the two trees here and they need to be symmetrical. So when you stick them back to back, they are going to lay on top of each other. Then you need a piece of thread. I did use some silver thread there and I'm applying some double sided tape along the tree at the back. I'm going to peel that off and this is where I'm going to align the thread all the way from top to bottom. Make sure that it's nicely centered. You can see that it is already spinning. Of course, we need to cover up the back and that's how, what we are going to do with the second uh, tree. For that, I'm using glue all over the tree and I'm just going to lay one on top of the other. By having that uh, white glue helps me slide the two pieces until I'm happy with the alignment. Now let's bring in the card where we did cut out the window already. Remember, we did use the larger die so this fits nicely inside. Align your spinner tree at the center of the window and I will secure it in place both at the top and at the bottom with some double sided tape. You can use scotch tape for that, anything as long as those threads are nicely secured down. Use your scissors to chop off the excess thread and then stick on top the top panel. Now the basic spinner mechanism is ready. You can leave it as it is, add sentiment underneath and you are good to go. If you want, however, you can take it a step further and I'm going to show you what else I'm going to do for that. So again, I did grab the paper pad. I know it has elements here that fit nicely with the look and feel of uh, what I already have on top of my card. After all, they all come from the same paper pad. In any case, whatever you choose to use as an embellishment for your card, make sure that you don't stick it in a way that blocks the spinning of your element. Just make sure that you leave that window completely open. And after playing along with some of the elements, I decided to go with that Merry Christmas label as well as with some of the gifts. I usually pop out way more die cuts than I'm actually going to use so that I can audition them, try and uh, decide the final composition. But I always stick a little envelope on the front flap of the paper pad so that I can add all those extra die cuts that I didn't use back in... Uh, that envelope and keep them together with the rest of the paper pad. And now the idea in a spinner card is to spin it many many times before you put it inside an envelope. Then place it inside, seal it and send it away. When the recipient gets the card and opens it, the tree is going to start spinning. The more you spin it before you place it inside the envelope, the better the effect was going to be for the recipient. So here are all the three cards that I made for today, trying to uh, move through different styles as well as different techniques.
always focusing on the same die set to make the most out of it. So these were the cards for today, down below in the description you will find links to everything I used. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment down below here on YouTube because this is part of a video hope and you may win prizes by Studio Light. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired, thank you all so much for visiting and I'll see you all next time.